Welcome back guys. We have some explaining to do as to why there were no videos for the past three or yeah. four days. So here's the breakdown. What is your body you didn't go through security. Yes, uh, we have did. didn't. Allow security, you didn't go through the allow security. How come you didn't come earlier to the gate? Uh, you fly and allowed. There's a security procedure. You need to be one hour before here. We, we've been here for two and a half hours. Yeah. But they've been calling you. Yeah. What name? Okay. I'm so sorry. What's your name? Uh, friends. Can you please step aside to the... Mari! We came to Athens airport and we were waiting for our flight. We go to the, go to the check-in mm -hmm. and at the check-in uh, we were told that our names had been called for the past three hours for uh, a second checkup. What it comes down to is that we had absolutely no clue that we were being requested for further checkup. We weren't even told at TSA that there was going to be a second security belt, which we were surprised by because yeah. we heard the Israeli security was really, really heavy. And so, rugged, and we came through blendingly, like no issues at all, and we're like, wow, cool, Israel, it's easy to get into, I guess. So we get to the desk and everything like that, and you know, there's a big group of uh, Hasidic Jews and everything, big family. So uh, we were like, right, okay, so the line was taking a little bit of time and these names were consistently being called. So we finally, we actually get to the desk and they say to us, we go, right, so uh, uh, your names have been being called for the last three hours. hours and why didn't you show up? So immediately this aggressive tone toward us um, for not realizing that, that this request had been sent out for us. They pull us aside, they're still processing another family, and then they come to us. The first thing they did was split, split us, us up. up, and this is still happening right next to the check-in gate, right next to the line where all the people are standing waiting for the plane. And they split us up in front of these 40, people. 50 people. The questioning begins, and it starts out easy, like, what's your last name, what's your father's name? And then the questioning took a mental turn and they asked me to explain to them where I'm from and I said I moved from Seattle to Berlin. I originally wanted to travel but in Berlin I had a business opportunity and so I stayed and that is how I met Niall. When I told them that we met four months ago the questioning got even more suspicious and rugged. So here's an example from my questioning. I tell her I moved from Seattle to Berlin and she goes okay so you moved from Boston to Berlin and then, and I was like, no, 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 I moved from Seattle to Berlin. And then she's like, oh, okay, so what did you do in Boston before you moved? And I was like, excuse me, I just told you that I moved from Seattle to Berlin, not from Boston to Berlin. And so it was this um, back and forth questioning and re-questioning with obviously false information. I had more of a um, straightforward questioning, but so I was asked, oh, so you originally from London, obviously, well, England, she saw my passport, I uh, explained that I was from London as it's closer to where my original hometown is, easy to explain. Then it turned to, so why are you now living in Berlin? So I explained honestly, I said that I didn't agree with the move of Brexit, I voted against it. So she then asked me, the, was this a protest? Was I protesting against my country? Obviously Israel is a very patriotic country, so to them that must have seemed somewhat alien. So I explained, no, nope, this isn't a protest. So she asked, are any of your family? currently with you in Germany? I said, no. So she was like, so you've run from your country for what reason? I said, I haven't run from my country. If anything, I will be returning back to England at some point, I don't know when. Which then led her to ask, so how long will you be staying in Berlin? I said, I didn't know, this was completely up in air, I just was trying to stay in Berlin for as long as possible. Which led her to continuously lead back and forth between other members of security whilst questioning me. So I had no idea what's going on. By this time, we are both trembling. My breathing was accelerated. Niall told me that he had serious breathing issues. My hands were on the side of my body trembling and the lady looks me in the eyes and asks me, why are you so nervous? Like, why are you trembling? Yes, and Niall got the same question and I was like, you know, this isn't, this isn't how I'm normally questioned at airports to get on an aircraft. Being profiled. I, exactly. I 
we <coughs> felt uh, that we were being unfairly profiled for their mistake of mispronouncing our names and they had villainized us right away because they didn't seem to believe us that we didn't understand the names correctly. It, it, was, it was then at that point that they said, right, so you see that you have laptops and everything like that, you have a camera, why are you using this? And obviously journalism in Israel is obviously frowned upon as well. Yeah. So we had to explain that we weren't journalists, we were just documenting our holidays, we went further to show them yes, editing. I pulled, out, I pulled out my computer, I showed them the video that was released for you guys two days ago. They still didn't fully buy our story, so what it came down to was, listen guys, the plane is about to take off, close all your stuff, and, and come head. with us. So we run after them, down a staircase, past tons of other people in this airport who are looking at us like, like, criminals. We have, like criminals, like we have just committed a serious crime violating international law, and we are brought to this small white room. So with security, with clearly security. printed on the door. So we take our jackets off, we're standing there in t-shirts, shoes off, then our feet were swabbed with chemical tests, my computer was swabbed, on the keyboards. So after all of this, after all the chemical testing and more questioning and another metal detector, they yes. tell us, okay, listen guys, either you get on this plane without your stuff we or you tomorrow. don't get on the plane at all today. So essentially what we were left with was each. a shirt each, a pair of socks each, two pairs of boxes each, a pair of jeans, our shoes, our passports, our wallets, and that's our it. phones. Nothing else. We were bare bones and I was forced to leave all my camera gear, my computer, literally everything in the hands of people that we had met like 45 minutes prior. Mm -hmm. The flight was delayed 30 minutes. Due to us or them, whichever way you want to look at it. We then got on the flight. We were sitting on this plane worried that maybe something was in our bag that we did not know about, that we genuinely had no knowledge of. I thought on the plane when we got to the airport that we were going to be greeted by Israeli police officers with guns and something like that and they were going to say follow us. But it actually did lead to us getting through. We were once in half questioned again when we got to but the nothing airport. major. We had to fill out some papers so our baggage would be delivered to our hostel. We get to the hostel, check in, um, our belongings were still sort of just thrown up in the air. We didn't know that we weren't going to be taking them to Israel and we were sitting there with one backpack between the two of us. Yeah. And a fanny pack. One fanny pack, yeah. Which uh, really kind of left us with nothing. You know, we had the house, well, the hostel room. And we met a load of people, a load of Israelis, some Americans. It was Israelis, wonderful. Like that. Who who couldn't believe this? They, uh, they, they, they said so that they had never heard, heard of anything, anything like, like this before. before, and it made us even more uncomfortable with mm -hmm. the situation because we really didn't know what was up. We were supposed to get our bags the next day so that we'd have all our clothing and we'd be able to collect some footage of Jerusalem and all of that. This was very important to both of us because that city is such a focal point of well, all issues, relig religion, religious history and, and religious history, exactly. And all the footage that you're seeing now is the only footage that we actually managed to That we to actually have. So from the GoPro, a little bit of airport footage and a little bit of beach footage. And then on the ride back, we got our, we got our belongings back, something like six hours before we actually had to leave Israel again. So we, so we were left with nothing. What I will say is, regardless of all, everything that has happened or, or did happen with customs and everything like that, Israel is such a wonderful country. Unbelievable. It, 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 you can see the desperation there. There is obviously still the desperation here. Yeah, and it is an interesting clash of cultures and the fact that it somehow still works is incredible. Like, you know, for instance, the old city of Jerusalem, you know, you have Muslim quarters, Jewish quarters. Leading all the way up to the Western Wall, where this is the spot for the Jewish religion. Leading all the way up to this spot was a Muslim market. So everything is interconnected and sort of woven into each other. 
because of the history of these two religions colliding colliding head on, head on in this one tiny spot on earth and i think the the issue is you know when we told people that we were coming to israel people were like what is wrong with you really you know really think this through and to be honest you need to go there and see you have to because western media is completely smeared distorted what this place actually is like um, it's a really prosperous country and from some of the footage you can see that there is wealth in this country there is destitution but there is wealth and you know you're always gonna have it is a sort of a beautiful mix and at no point and this i think is very important there was no point where i ever felt unsafe Mm -hmm. in that country. Just for the record, there are no missiles once a day or any of that mm -hmm. that you get from Western media where you may be tricked to think that is, that it is sort of a war zone that these people live in just for their religion basically. It, it, but it isn't. It is, it's a lie. It's it, a lie. It's a lie. The, the, the country itself, you know, is, is amazing. and. I would honestly say to anyone to go, regardless of this custom. Whether you are religious or not. There are anything that we have said, you know, the issues we've had, throw that out the window. Honestly, Israel is, is beautiful. And it, I think with all the Western media and everything that is smearing the name of Israel, that is why they feel inclined to deter people from coming into their country. And that is why we were perhaps treated so poorly. Yeah, they thought we were journalists. They thought this was a second smear campaign. It has been an eye-opening experience. It's been somewhat heartbreaking as well, you know. But... At the end of the day, when it, all, when it all comes down to it, it is an experience that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Through this trip, Niall uh, was able to accomplish one of a dream of seeing the Western Wall and finally be able to just lay my hands on it with, with you know, with no religious background, with no faith or anything that I bear. There's a very powerful spiritual place. You can this, feel the power. The Western Wall is coming off of that, vibrating. Mm -hmm. It is when you are there, you are completely blown away because I was not religious and I still am not religious, but I came there and I sat down and there was this energy in the air and when you looked at the wall there was a resonating energy coming from this place which when you look at it in a sense it is just a wall but the meaning and the history behind it makes it so much more and through that i i never understood why people were religious and why people seemed to be so willing to die for the religion and i can safely say that after this experience at the Western Wall, I absolutely understand why religion is so heavily protected by its followers. It, it honestly was amazing. Running your hands down that thing, you could feel all the power coming off of this omnipresent power that was just resonating through everything. And it, it really was beautiful because regardless of whether you believe in a faith or not, Seeing so many people with so much hope and passion for that area, this, this small microcosm within another microcosm within another, it, it truly was breathtaking. And all I can say about Israel is just go. Yeah, just go. Overall, it's hard to get in, but it is extremely worth it. And you have both of our words that it will not be a waste of your money. Then I'd like to thank you for watching and we apologize for breaking our word on creating videos every day. Mm -hmm. It wasn't our fault, but in any sense, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys tomorrow. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. <coughs> Sick shit, man. Nice. You have to